In this episode, we're going to build a pair of magnetic paddle shifters for sim racing. The particularity of those paddle shifters is that they are equipped with an ultra smooth ball bearings mechanism and they will produce a very satisfying click. Let's get building. To build one single shifter, you're gonna need one micro switch with a 9.5 millimeters hole spacing, two 10 millimeters diameter magnets, two eight millimeters outer diameter ball bearings with an inner diameter of four millimeters, two circlips with an inner diameter of three millimeters, one 35 millimeters long shaft with a diameter of four millimeters. For the wiring, two 10 to 20 centimeters wires to connect the switch to the wheel controller. I like to use DuPont connectors to make the assembly and disassembly quick and easy. For the fasteners, we will need two M4 bolts and nuts to secure the shifter to the wheel, so the length will vary depending on your wheel. Two 15 mm M3 bolts and nuts to attach the paddle. Two 15 to 20 mm M2 bolts and nuts to fasten the micro switch to the shifter. Finally, you're gonna need three 3D printed parts. One shifter lever, one shifter base, and one paddle. This one is the tall version. The first step of the construction is to print those three parts. I am using black PLA for those with four walls and 50% infill. This should be more than enough to get very rigid parts. We need to clean up the printed parts by first removing the support material. On the shifter's base, there is only one support piece, but it's pretty big. I will use some wire cutter to first break the lower part that also includes the channels for the wires. I still need to remove the remaining support at the top, below the arm of the base. For the support inside the openings for the ball bearings, I will push them gently with the curved tip of an Allen wrench. It's important to push them in the right direction, from the inside to the outside, as the outside holes are larger than the inside ones. I then simply use a sharp blade to scrape any remaining support bits still attached to the arm of the base. Similarly, for the lever, we just need to push out the support for the magnet opening and then pop the support of the opening that will give us access to the inside of the base and the M4 screws that we will use to fasten the base to the wheel. The paddle does not require any support cleanup as it was printed flat on the bed. We can now proceed to smooth the remaining rough edges of the base and the lever. For this step, I'm using a sanding file. It's very important that the underside part of the base's arm is as flat as possible. It will be the resting position for the lever, so it needs to be flat and level as much as possible. The overall print is pretty good, so it only takes a few seconds to clean it up. I will do another pass inside the base to make sure nothing can block the lever. For the lever, I will quickly clean up the elephant's foot that formed on the bottom. I first use the file to remove the bulk of the material. And then, I scrape the edge with a sharp blade. You can also use a deburring tool for this kind of simple cleanup. We will now check each part for clearance, which will make the final assembly much easier. The first thing we need to do is make sure that the ball bearings can fit into the base. The clearance here is perfect, and the ball bearings fit nicely on each side. The next step is to make sure the M4 bolts can be screwed into the base easily. Again, everything seems to be fine here. Now, we check to make sure the M2 bolts can fit and slide comfortably into the base's front openings. It's important that these are nice and loose so that later on, we can freely adjust the switch's height. The clearance for the 10 mm magnet can now be checked. Unfortunately, once printed, the hole is slightly too small for the magnet. This is not a big problem, and we will fix this in the next step. I now check the lever, starting with the hole for the magnet. I can easily press fit the magnet into the lever. Because the part was printed in a different orientation, the hole does work nicely here, despite being the same size as the one on the base. Let's check the shaft. As I suspected, it's also a little tight. 
Again, nothing major. This is an easy fix. Finally, I make sure the holes for the M3 bolts are large enough. Those are the bolts we will use to attach the paddle. And everything looks fine. So, all in all, we're pretty good. We only have two openings to tweak. In order to fix the hole for the magnet in the base, I use a small diameter sanding flap wheel. After sanding at a moderately slow speed for a few seconds, we can test the magnet again. It is now a nice and snug fit, but the hole is loose enough so that it does not put any pressure on the printed part. I measure the actual diameter of the shaft with a caliper, and it's exactly 4 millimeters. I will use a drill bit slightly smaller than 4 millimeters to open up the hole in the lever. I also want this fit to be snug. After I slowly drill through the lever axis, we are ready to try the shaft again. The fit is good and not too loose, but the hole is large enough that I can push the metal shaft in without damaging the plastic part. Before installing the two magnets, I will mark them to make sure I attach them in the correct orientation. I simply stick them together and mark a temporary dot on each side. Now, I know that the two sides without a dot need to be in contact on the final assembly. I will use 5 minute epoxy resin to attach the two magnets to the printed parts. I mix the resin in a small silicone mixing cup. Then I spread the resin on the inside of the hole of the lever. I'm using a sheet of parchment paper to make sure the parts don't stick to my work surface. I simply press fit the magnet into the lever. There's quite a lot of squeeze out from the hole. I will clean this up later on with some alcohol. I then proceed exactly the same for the base, spreading the epoxy in the base's hole, and then press fitting the magnet into the hole. Since the magnet is slightly taller than the arm of the base, I make sure it is flush with the bottom of the arm so it rests snugly on the lever. Before the epoxy cures, I can double check to make sure everything is aligned correctly. After a few minutes, we can slide the lever into the base and confirm that everything is good. I will now wire the switch with the two black and red wires. I first make sure my two wires are the same length. Then I start stripping the wires by removing about 5 millimeters of plastic jacket on each wire. I then tin each wire with some solder. The switch has three terminals marked NC, NO, and C for common or ground. The two wires should be soldered to the NO and C terminals if we want the circuit to close when the switch is pressed. However, if the switch did not have markings, we can easily check the wiring with a multimeter by measuring the resistance between the terminals in different configurations. First, I check that there is no resistance when I just touch the two probes. Then I connect one probe to the NO terminal and the other to the ground terminal. Now when I press the switch, I should see the resistance changing to zero. That is exactly what is happening here. We can now tin the two relevant terminals and solder the black wire to one of the terminals then the red wire to the other one. Ideally, you should solder the black wire to the C terminal, but that does not really matter. We can now install the switch on the base using the two M2 bolts and nuts. We do this now while there is no lever, so it is easier to access the inside of the base to hold the nut in place. I won't tighten the bolts fully. I will leave them loose enough so I can align the switch perfectly with the lever once it's in place. In this step, I will install the two M4 bolts and nuts that will be used to secure the shifter to the wheel. I first screw the two bolts inside the base. Then I screw the nuts at the back temporarily. Because we have checked everything for clearance before, the installation is very quick. I can now tug the two wires in the wire channels. Everything is nice and flush with the base. We can now build the lever assembly and install it onto the base. The first step is to slide one of the ball bearings onto the shaft. I place the ball bearing on the tip of the shaft, and then I use some pliers on the work surface to push the ball bearing in. I insert the lever in the base, and I will use some grease in the lever axis to make sure the insertion of the shaft is easy. I use a small hammer to gently tap the shaft in the lever. We need to be careful here, we don't want to force anything. If the fit is too tight, you can drill the lever again to enlarge the axis opening. Once the shaft is fully in place, I can insert the second ball bearing. I once again use the pliers to support the ball bearing, and I just tap gently on the shaft to push the ball bearing in. We can now install the circlips to secure the ball bearings on each side. One for the left, and one for the right. Finally, I can align the switch perfectly with the lever. 
making sure the switch is engaged when the lever is fully pressed. This is looking good. We are now on the home stretch. I first installed the two M3 bolts on the paddle. I aligned the paddle with the base. And then, I screw the two bolts into the base. I place the two nuts at the back of the assembly. And then I tighten manually the two bolts until the paddle is nice and secure. I braid the wires together for now. When time comes to install the shifters on the wheel, I may use some shrink wrap to protect them. This shifter is now complete. We can clean up any epoxy residues or marks and test it. This shifter is producing a very satisfying click, and unlike standard shifters, the action is extremely smooth thanks to the ball bearings. Make sure to check the video linked in the description if you want to see the full CAD process on how I designed and modeled those shifters in Fusion 360. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you want to get notified when I upload new videos in this sim racing series. Thank you for watching. Happy building and happy racing.